live from our seven Tasmania studios. Your nightly news with Kim Miller begins now. Good evening and welcome to our bulletin. First tonight, a Tasmanian pilot killed in a horror helicopter crash near Labrina is being remembered as a hero. Witnesses have described the moment the chopper plunged to the ground. A man who saw life from a height many can only dream of and died in a way few can imagine. It's a tragic loss and, and TFS's heart goes out to the man's family and friends. His colleagues in the TFS Air Operations Unit remembering him as an outstanding pilot and a great mate. A friend shared, God took a hero. It goes to show that the dangers that pilots put themselves in to support those Tasmanian firefighters uh, on the ground. The 41-year-old whose family has asked we not name him was waterbombing an out-of-control bushfire near Labrina when his Huey helicopter plummeted to the ground. I heard a bang and I thought, I reckon the two helicopters have kicked each other or he's hit something. Mick McKenna was just 200 metres away at the time. He ran outside and saw the desperate attempts to extinguish the flames. I seen the helicopters um, come back and there was another helicopter that tried to put it out. He had five goes of putting it out. A team of three from the Australian Transport Safety Bureau arrived at the crash scene this afternoon, examining the wreckage and sifting through nearby paddocks for evidence. They will also gather all available recorded data for analysis and interview witnesses. What caused this tragedy won't be known anytime soon. Investigators will take at least six weeks to compile a preliminary report. The fleet of aerial units were grounded for most of today, but with the uncontained fire burning through 1,600 hectares and counting, they'll need to take to the skies again without one of their own. Garth Burley, 7 Tasmania News. The Defence Force will be deployed to Tasmania to assist with COVID outbreaks in three of the state's aged care facilities. It's a move the state government says is out of an abundance of caution after a lockdown plagued few months for the sector. Confined within four walls and visitors shut out of aged care homes, this is something leading experts say will leave a lasting impact on residents. To keep them locked and in some cases, particularly in Victoria and New South Wales, for weeks on end is act actually immoral and, and it is a form of abuse. Tasmania is enhancing its efforts to manage outbreaks in the vulnerable setting. The ADF will arrive in the coming days to help facilities across the state. This is one of a number of strategies and the sector is really struggling anyway before this with workforce issues. This is taken out of uh, an abundance of caution um, and of course the support from the ADF will be uh, general support and not clinical. But the state government stopped short of confirming whether the call-up was due to a lack of preparation. There was a need, demonstrated need, not a clinical need, just a general need. And as I said, there's uh, five um, aged care facilities with outbreaks and three of those are working with uh, the Commonwealth. Meanwhile, the education sector is continuing to manage outbreaks in the classroom, with the total now at seven across Catholic, independent and public schools. The important part in regards to keeping schools open is those educators in front of the classroom. And if we see too many of them catching COVID, then well, what's the backup plan? Where's the process in place to make sure that, that can be covered going forward? 58 teachers have still chosen not to get the jab despite a mandate in government schools. And we think that that extra protection has helped. A lot of our members have really appreciated that because they feel as though that they don't want to be responsible for putting someone into hospital. Overall, COVID case numbers jumped overnight to 513. Ten people are being treated in hospital while one remains in the ICU. Grace Evans, 7 Tasmanian News. The search for a prisoner who was on the loose for four days in southern Tasmania has finally come to an end. The man was arrested this morning and has since been charged with escape and resisting a police officer. He allegedly fled from the Royal Hobart Hospital on Friday while receiving medical treatment. Police are investigating a shooting in Launceston's outer suburbs. Mayfield residents reportedly witnessed a gun being fired at a man near Bushland on Hargrave Crescent last night. They also told police the shooter fled in a black four-wheel drive heading towards Rochalie on fire trails. Anyone with information should contact Crime Stoppers. 
A local group is taking action against the University of Tasmania's proposal to relocate to central Hobart. Save UTAS campus starting a petition today, saying the institution is prioritising property over education. Signing a petition to keep the University of Tasmania out of the CBD. It is not bringing the university together. The university has more of a focus on the campus. Calling on the council to halt its support for a proposal to shift the Sandy Bay campus. Gaining Senator Erica Betts' interest, writing to the Auditor General in Canberra to undertake an assessment to determine the visibility of the financing, the sustainability of it, and of course it's for others to talk about the educational impact and value, which I question. The council has recognised the desire of UTAS to move into the city and to bring its campus together, uh, and that's, that's really where council's at at the moment. UTAS's Vice-Chancellor, Professor Rufus Black, saying it's about providing more Tasmanians with the opportunity to get the best possible education, with study facilities and student accommodation already popping up across the city. But Save UTAS campus disagrees. I believe this is a, a property grab. It's, a, it's, it's about um, speculation, financial speculation in the CBD. It's not about students, it's not about education. Also saying the Sandy Bay campus should be refurbished instead. We want um, the University of the Future to be based on the campus. We want students to have that facility and for it to be revitalised. The council will be acting uh, as a planning authority with the Sandy Bay rezoning and ultimately that will go up to the planning commission to decide uh, what happens. So I think a lot of these issues can be explored. The petition requires 1,000 signatures to achieve a public meeting and is available on the group's website. Ruby Kamein, 7 Tasmania News. A new life-saving piece of equipment will help keep Glenorchy residents and members of the Historical Arms and Military Society safe. The defibrillator was handed over to the community club and is a welcome addition. A grant from the Premier's discretionary fund was put toward the important investment. All those you know, crucial seconds can make a big difference. And so with community groups out there, we know there are a lot of them, particularly in the northern suburbs, who have an older demographic who participate in their activities. And we now have a club welfare officer uh, which looks after that, and this is a follow-on from that, to say not only are we interested in the military history and um, remembering the sacrifices that our servicemen, servicemen made, but also we care about our members as well. The unit has now been installed in the Society's club rooms for quick and easy access in the event of an emergency. Authorities say Hobart's e-scooter trial has uncovered a major need for infrastructure upgrades throughout the city. The council is now looking into solutions to improve traffic flow and safety, including adding more separated cycleways as demand for scooter and bicycle transport increases. It is all about choice. Uh, people are, are voting with their feet. They're keen to use these two-wheeled vehicles. Uh, but we do need to make more space for them on our roads. Well, we'd like to see a really integrated safety campaign uh, and we've talked to the two operators about this uh, and hopefully uh, we can use all our resources to essentially help make these streets safer. Council also says 1.7 kilometres of cycleway in Hobart was approved last year as a first step. Car lovers can swap the street circuit for Simmons Plains at the upcoming Motorama. Enthusiasts can jump in the passenger seat of a historic car and cruise the Simmons Plains racetrack before the classics go on display in Longford. Motorsport legend Barry Oliver remembers watching Grand Prix drivers scream through the town's main street during the 50s and 60s. The cars came round the corner at probably 90k or 100 kilometres an hour. So all that separated me from them was a fence, a wire fence. If my father had known that, he would have had a fit. Around 30 cars are available for laps around Simmons Plains on Saturday, Saturday, March 12, before the glory days of the flying mile come to life in Longford the following day, March 13.
with early footage of the Tasmanian tiger has been given a splash of colour. Smithton's Mark Dabner has spent months modifying film from 1935 of Benjamin, the last tiger kept in captivity at Beaumaris Zoo. The painstaking process involved colouring each of the film's 500 frames and removing scratches and blemishes. Some of the original black and white parts of the film were retained. The release follows work by a French archivist last year who colourised footage of the Tasmanian tiger lying in the sun in 1933. Big rigs are roaring in support of the state's truckies. Machines from a monster private collection are firing up for this year's truck run, helping drive a health program for those behind the wheel. Dick Beckett is the king of heavy haulage, a dairy farmer's son who dreamt of the open road. There's no way in the world I was going to go and milk cows. I wanted to drive bulldozers and trucks. And guess what? I still do. He not only drives them, he collects them, from local legends to rare imports from the United States. But they're all Mack trucks, the result of supreme loyalty from when times were tough. Times you couldn't pay your bill, and they supported you. And of course, when you get on top of all those sorts of things, um, you don't forget it. He now supports another cause, the annual truck run, which sees rigs like these travel from Launceston to Longford. This year, it's raising money for the Royal Flying Doctor Service and its new Trucky Checkups program, offering free physical and mental health checks for those behind the wheel. And now we're looking to, I guess, give back and support new initiatives through the money that's been raised. Dick also has a title to defend. His 1959 B75 Mac won the truck run's best in show last year. Imported from America, it's possibly the only one of its kind in Australia. We're trying to maintain local history here now. A lot of people probably look down on the transport industry and they don't realise that um, everything that we wear or we eat has all been on a truck. The proud industry puts on its best for the event on March 13. Tom Johnson, 7 Tasmania News. The humble potato has helped a Tasmanian distillery receive recognition on the world stage. Hellfire Bluff has been awarded Australia's best varietal vodka at this year's World Vodka Awards in London. Its potato vodka is made using Tasmanian pink eyes or Nicholas, with around 15 kilos used in each bottle. Hellfire Bluff Distillery is also renowned for its award-winning gins and non-alcoholic spirits. The Hobart Hurricanes have locked in all-rounder Tim David for another two seasons after he landed the biggest price tag of any Aussie in the IPL. David went to the Mumbai Indians for a staggering one and a half million dollars yesterday. The Hurricanes are keen to hang on to David as they build a core of veteran players alongside Ben McDermott, Darcy Short and Matthew Wade who have also re-signed. There's talk of David also playing in the Tigers one day squad. Meanwhile, former Australian captain Tim Payne has returned to the Tasmanian setup, but in a coaching role. Interim coach Ali De Winter says the 37-year-old has been great with the young players and is with the squad most days. He added Payne is not doing any batting or wicket-keeping and there's no clarity over if or when he'll return as a player. And Tasmania's budding soccer players will have their time to shine with two youth football leagues launching this month. The development leagues for under-15 girls and under-17 boys are set for short seven-round competitions. They're aiming to boost opportunities for talented locals. Recognising that there's a lack of um, competition opportunities for our best young female and male players across the state, so there's limited opportunity for them to play with and against the best players on a regular basis. Given that we don't play enough games in the state, this is going to increase that, um, the game time across the state, which is big. Um, but then on the other side to that as well, we get to bring the best uh, in those age groups against one another. The boys competition kicks off this Sunday while the girls begin the following weekend and they'll play finals in June. And that's it for Sport Tonight, Kim. OK. Good evening, everyone. 29 degrees in Launceston today, Burnie 24, 23 in Devonport and Hobart 21. Across the state, Flinders Island and Bushy Park, 26, 24 in Grove, King Island, Low Head and Liawini, all 23 and 21 in Friendly Beaches. Scattered cloud can be seen about the north, east and through Bass Strait today with mostly clear skies elsewhere. Further out, middle level cloud extends from Western Australia to the south of the Bight, associated with an upper level trough, while convective cloud is scattered across inland, northern and eastern Australia. Tomorrow's chart shows a cold front to the west of Tasmania. The trough continues over the mainland while a high lies to the south of Western Australia. 
Northeast to southeasterly winds tomorrow 5 to 15 knots, tending north to northeasterly 10 to 20 knots during the day and reaching 30 knots about the west late. And there is a strong wind warning current for the southwest coast and central west coast. And a road weather alert is in place for slippery, slippery roads for parts of the north, west and east of the state. 25 in Hobart and Bothwell tomorrow, late showers and 27 in Jeeveston. Developing showers and 23 in Launceston, Devonport 21, Cressy reaching 22. 20 degrees in Burnie tomorrow, developing showers and 23 in Strawn, Curry 21. And 22 and showers in St Helens and Swansea and Orford both 23. And the UV tomorrow is reaching very high across the state with sunset at 8.17pm. On Thursday, showers about the northeast, west and far south. Showers about the west, south and central areas on Friday, mostly clearing by evening. And on Saturday, fine and partly cloudy with southwesterly winds. 38 in Perth tomorrow, showers in Adelaide and Melbourne, partly cloudy and 28 in Sydney, Brisbane and Cairns both showers and sunny and 33 in Darwin. That is all your news for now. Figure skating headlines tonight's Winter Olympics action from 7.30. For now, good night.